Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick video to answer this specific question from Charles Maguire. However, I've had it quite a bit over the last two or three months, so I thought, you know what, it's time to do an updated video. Now, I have made a number of series talking about how you set up iNow specifically on fixed wing, and I'll put a link to one of the latest ones down below. It isn't particularly tricky. There is a process that I use that I've developed over the last 10, 11 years that's pretty bulletproof at this point. So if you follow along with each individual step, you should get to the end and it works. But Charles's question is more around two things that appear to do the same job, but actually do something very different. So Charles and all of the others that have been directed to this video found it. Leave the feed. This one is for you. So the first thing we're going to talk about is something called auto level mode. You'll see this in all of the setups that I do. Auto level and auto tune are two modes that I have on separate switches that I use in the maiden flight. Now, there is a little parameter in iNav that sets the offset between when a plane is flying straight and level and the slight nose-up attitude it needs in order to it to fly a cruise throttle without gaining or losing altitude. That little offset used to be set historically by just plugging a number into the CLI. In the very old series, if you ever still watch one of those, you'll see me putting it into the command line interface for fixed wing pitch trim, and I'd pick something between two and four, fly the model, see if it was gaining or losing altitude, and then adjust it by a degree at a time until it was about there. However, in modern iNav, we don't have to do that thing iteratively. We can just tell the model to figure that out. Now, why do we need that slight offset? Well, most model aircraft, when you put a flight controller in it, the flight controller will be sat pretty level. However, the nose of the plane needs to be up anything from 1, 2 degrees, up to 6, 7, even 8 degrees, in order for it to maintain the altitude as you're flying around. Now that slight nose up is what the fixed wing pitch trim, if I can even say it, actually does in iNav. So what auto trim mode does is as you are flying around, put it in something like horizon or angle mode would be my recommendation. As you're flying around, you enable auto level and what auto level does is it will then detect whether or not the model is rising or sinking, gaining or losing altitude, and adjust that value for that fixed wing pitch trim to adjust it so that that nose is at the right attitude. So typically you're going to be going at your cruise throttle, you're going to stick it into auto level, and iNav will figure that out. Then you land and disarm, then you can turn off auto level, and that new value is stored. And you can see that if you go into the CLI and type in get, FW underscore pitch underscore trim, you'll see that that has a discrete value now. Now, in theory, you shouldn't have to do that again, but all that's doing is letting iNav know what the slight nose up attitude needs to be in order for it to not lose or gain altitude when you're flying around at cruise throttle. Now, that's very different from the next one. The next thing to talk about then is what servo trim does. Now, the cool thing about iNav is that while you are flying it in one of the stabilized modes, so your angle, horizon, or any of the GPS-assisted modes, so your position hold, your you know nav position hold, your return to home, whatever it is, iNav is using those values of the wings being level and that slight nose-up attitude that we've just set uh, to keep the plane flying straight and level when you have your hands off your sticks. Now, that's great. However, if you then try and fly in a mode where iNav isn't doing that hard work for you, then the servos won't be in the right position. Now, historically, if you were flying a plane and you don't have iNav on it, the way you'd correct for all this is using the trims on the radio. You never, ever touch the trims on your radio. So how do you get it so that if you flick from something like one of the stabilized modes, like angle or horizon, into manual or acro, how do you make it so that the servos are all trimmed already so your plane doesn't immediately try and loop the loop or try and roll uncontrollably and that's what servo trim actually does now there are two ways that you can do this historically the old way was use a mode called servo auto trim you'd assign that i typically assign that onto a momentary switch and what you do is you get your model flying straight and level so that you're happy and then you flick on that mode and that then sets those servo positions to be the new midpoints for the, the servos, for your ailerons, elevator, rudder, and whatever. And then when you go into manual or acro, the, they're all set. 
However, I asked for a new feature to be added, which is something that RD Plane has had for a long time, and it's been in iNav for quite a few revisions now. It's the options to select continuously trim servos. If you turn that on, then as you're flying around in angle or horizon mode, then iNav will be looking at where the controls need to be to maintain that straight and level flight, and then updating those midpoints dynamically all the time, so that when you flick, into manual or acro mode and you're not you're letting iNav do all the hard work for you then the controls are already all trimmed beautifully for you personally i prefer continuously trim servos it means that as i'm flying around iNav if i get the central gravity in a slightly different position or something else is going on the plane iNav will automatically trim all that out for me so i can flick into manual or acro and still have a beautiful stable trimmed model so how do I use these two separate things? Well, the thing with servo auto trim is you don't have to have that turned on or worry about that if you're not going to be using things like the manual or acro mode. However, if you're going to have a nice agile model that you want to throw about the sky and to fly in a spirited manner, then manual and acro are the modes you're going to want. So you don't have to do that, but I'd recommend doing both. So for me, I use my standard maidening process. The first time I fly the plane, I will fly it around, just make sure it's okay. And then I will turn on the auto level mode and I will fly it around. Auto level will then set that nose offset, that fixed wing trim. And once that pitch trim is done and I'm happy with it, I'll land it and disarm it. And that means then that that nose up attitude is all set. Next flight, as I'm flying around, continuously trim servos will then start to trim all of those servos so that they are in exactly the right position. So when the wings are level and the nose has that slight nose up attitude that we've just fixed, then servo auto trim will automatically fix that. And by turning on continuously trim servos in INAV configurator, I never have to worry about that. It's just done for me automatically. And once those two things are done, you know what? You don't have to worry about it ever again. So that is the answer. They do two very different things. Auto level is setting that offset for the nose so that the plane flies slightly nose up to maintain altitude when you're flying around at your cruise throttle. And the other one then is a servo auto trim. And that's job is to move the servos into a trim position. So as you move out of a mode like angle or horizon into something like manual or acro, your plane is still straight and level. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.